and welcome to Wedding Day TV with me, Peter Safton, on the 29th of April 2011. So I presume you've all seen the Royal Wedding, but if not, I'll go through the details about that special dress. So, <laughs> starting from the top down, and I'll go through these in a bit more detail in a bit, but this is a very short version for those who just can't wait. <laughs> on the top we have the 1936 Cartier Halo tiara which was lent by the Queen. That was hinted on earlier on in the week but it actually happened yet. Also the veil was made of layers of soft ivory silk tulle with a trim of hand embroidered flowers. The bodice, well the bodice was narrowed at the waist and padded at the hips. In the hallmark of McQueen, McQueen's designer house. The dress individual flowers were hand cut from lace and sewn into ivory silk tulle. The train measures 2 meters 70 centimeters and the shoes were also from the, the McQueen house design or design house <laughs> design house sounds better <laughs> and they were satin and hand embroidered lace right a bit more detail now the designer as people actually guessed some time ago but uh, nobody actually agreed until the actual day of course <laughs> was designed by Sarah Burton of Alexander McQueen House Design. Um, also, um, she was actually quoted as saying the experience, sorry, it is an experience of a lifetime. Uh, lace on the bride's dress were designed in a rose, a thistle, a daffodil and a shamrock. And they were handmade by the Royal School of Needlework at Hampton Court Palace. The bride's train, as I said before, measured 2 metres, 70 centimetres. Uh, the lace motifs were pinned, f framed up and applied with stable stitching every 2 millimetres or 3 millimetres around each lace motif. The workers wash their hands every 30 minutes to make sure the lace and the threads were in pristine condition. And also the needles replaced every three hours to make sure they were sharp and also clean. The bride's earrings, as I mentioned before, were her grandmother's and they were presented to Carol Sorry, presented by Carol and Michael Middleton to her. Uh, there's something blue, which nobody's seen really, uh, is a ribbon which was, has been sewn into the interior of the dress. And there's something old, is the uh, traditional uh, Carrick Macross ma um, ma uh, <laughs> craftsmanship used to create the bridal ground. Uh, also, the, um, the uh, halo headdress. Oh, sorry, um, tiara, sorry, headdress, tiara, uh, which was Cartier. Uh, this was actually made in 1936 for the, uh, by the Queen's father, the Duke of York as he was, later George VI, for his Duchess, um, which was the Queen's mother, and then later presented to the Queen on her 18th birthday. Also, we have um, information on the bride's bouquet, which was shield-shaped, wise bouquet of myrtle, lily of the valley, sweet William, of course, and hyacinth. And that was designed by Shane Connolly, who also designed the interior decorations in Westminster Abbey. I'll just go through briefly who designed what for who. Pip Middleton's dress was designed by Sarah Burton again. Uh, we have for the four young bridesmaids, they were designed by um, children's wear designer Nikki McFarlane, uh, made by Miss McFarlane and also her daughter Charlotte McFarlane, and they're from Wiltshire in Kent. 
Mother's a Bride, Carol Middleton, uh, had a design by Catherine Walker. Uh, we had Duchess of Cornwall, her design was by Anna Valentine. And, and that's it really for the, the actual uh, main features for the wedding dress. So uh, it's from me, Peter Sefton, from Wedding Day TV. This is all about the dress, but I'll come back with some more information on the Royal Wedding soon. So, it is all from me, Peter Sefton, on this day, the 29th of April 2011. Goodbye.